What's the last thing you remember, Danny? He said we had to run. The reason you survived is because you're a very uncommon girl. You're not alone. Not anymore. Do you know what mutants are? A. B. N. It's headphones, Neil! What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a film review. So in this case it's going to be the 2021 film, The New Mutants. So I finally had a chance to take a, or give it a watch and see if it was generally as poorly received as I thought. Was it any good? Did it actually add anything to the X-Men or Mutant franchise or anything like that? And overall, I want to say while there's um, general, um, the general idea and background for what they could have done is there. And reading some of this trivia feels like they could have, they were aiming for a bigger introduction into the new X-Men universe. It didn't really live up to that expectation, mostly because it feels like a lot of the production delays, potential rewrites I think I read, but don't hold me to that part. But just the general issues with getting the film released and then the purchase of Disney's uh, portion of X-Men from Fox didn't help that things either. So um, in general, the film feels like it it could have been benefited from a general rewrite and starting from scratch rather than um, pushing out what they did so granted in the business world um, at the point of I guess where the film was at the point of release and all of that it would have been a sunk cost a big sunk cost to not have um, release a film but it also feels like by intro- by going basically all in and re- putting in as much as they could for the film it would have been a lot better than just pushing out what they had and um, losing out on the potential to set up a proper X-Men and Mutant film franchise. So with that being said, um, jumping into the film itself, overall, like I said, I didn't. I found that there was a lot of elements that could have been that were brought or introduced in the film that could have been expanded on um, and wasn't, um, and um, they did didn't do as much as they could have. So the biggest thing is that they did have a name drop for the X Men in the film, and that's all it came up to be. Um, and they did have a kind of in film um, teaser as far as Professor X being the one who knows how to find all the mutants. And reading the trivia, there was supposed to be a scene where um, Professor X and Storm came to visit the. Um, hospital and was dropped because of budgeting reasons but it could have been a proper setup where if they had expanded the budgets and had Professor X and Storm show up it would have probably benefited even if they don't do any any more films as far as the New Mutants or Mutants films goes it would have um, helped the film as far as showing that there is a relationship and world outside of the X-Men um, characters, plots, stories, and all of that. Kind of like a Star Wars story where you expand on the Rebels and Han Solo and the and Crimson Dawn and all of that. This could have benefited from the idea that not all mutants' lives are perfect. Not all, everyone has powers that they can control and use for, whether it's for the benefit or detriment of mutants and humans, but in general there's more to mutants than meets the eye. So having them, show, having Professor X and Storm show up would have benefited from the film. And in re- also reading the trivia, um, this film takes place during the ti- events of X-Men Apocalypse. So if they had a tie-in to say at least that this was maybe the fallout of having um, the main bad guy from X-Men Apocalypse show up and create this new round of mutants and show these characters as the fallout to those characters. So have uh, Macy Williams' character be you know, a variation of um, the beast and um, her variation is turning into a wolf. You have um, a guy who turns into a fireball, so kind of along the lines of um, the flame guy from the Fantastic Four. And then you have the main um, girl in the film be um, kind of along the line, a variation of kind of like the um, Phoenix, um, 
the character that um, Sophie Turner played, but more detrimental as far as nightmares go. So kind of along the lines of maybe a mix between the Phoenix and Professor X. So one of those things where they could have pulled that off a lot better than they did, but they introduced the elements, but throughout the course of the film, and for me at least about halfway through, I found that it felt like it wasn't really going anywhere and there wasn't any real payoff. You don't have no, you kind of know what the main problem of the film is going to be as far as the main protag- main lady's um, powers go, but they didn't really progress anything in the film to the point where it mattered. Um, and then you also have the late, the girl who um, can go and teleport into other realms, I guess, and whose power is magic. And you don't really get that idea until the end of the film when she has a met- when she can turn her arm to metal and she handles a sword. So her, um, and this is Anya Taylor Joy's character. And overall, that power seems cool. And then you, um, when you hear her name, um, it kind of you kind of have a vague memory that her name sounds familiar from the X Men franchise, and you're not really sure what her the relationship is until you read again you go into the trivia and you learn that she's actually the younger sister to colossus so when you see the and then when you see the army like oh that power is cool it kind of reminds me of colossus and the trivia expounds on that that that's who she is and again it's one of those scenes where they kind of tied it into deadpool a little bit or even the x-men films as a whole that she was separated from her brother or she was um sent there because she couldn't control her powers or the ma- her magic was too out of control or, and her brother couldn't protect her or anything like that where it's to that point where they don't really explain any reason for well they kind of leave the reasoning is that she, they have powers that are under that are being controlled and they want to um control their help them control their powers but halfway through the film you realize that there's not much going on to um, help that information or the plot move along or to the point again to the point where that matters so in general that's kind of where the film suffers is that it doesn't really tie into the X-Men franchise or films as a whole or to the comic books or anything like that aside from a bunch of a series of name drops that's about all the film does and you don't it doesn't really benefit anywhere so aside so from there that's basically the bulk of um as far as tying the film to anything relevant in the x-men and mutant franchises as far as the film itself goes it feels like um as far as macy williams being the wolf character in the film it feels like it's the start of typecasting her in roles that deal with wolves or animals or dire wolves or anything like that so when you're when i'm watching the film that's kind of where it felt and you, she kind of plays a more nicer version of her character as far as um, Arya goes in Game of Thrones. So kind of when she was a young, when she well, the, the younger version of her character, so like the first couple of seasons, less, and then it doesn't really translate as far as later, as far as her character into later in the film. So her performance was fine, but if I found that they didn't really towards the end of the film when they could have used her character translate or transforming into the wolf they didn't use that they had her show up or um, trans uh, turn into the wolf but they didn't show it early in the film when Anya Taylor Joy's character is showing the new girl that they're in a hospital and in a uh, kind of a cage because of the force field so things like that were all over the place and didn't really pay off um but if you want a general idea of the theme of the film it's kind of like legion meets american horror story asylum so legion kind of introduces the idea of the mutants outside of the x-men universe where you have mutants with um, powers and troubles and they have trouble um controlling their powers and then but in this case it's in a hospital where they're being kept there against their will but without telling them which is kind of what we see in american horror story asylum so in general that idea would have worked if it uh, mattered a little bit um, but it also feel, felt like a little bit of introducing the idea of Stranger Th- a prequel to Stranger Things where Eleven and the rest of the characters were created um, and this is kind of that scene where we have the main character having a flash or a premonition that if their powers work out and they're able to control their characters that they're sent to another place to um, use their powers for the whims of 
an overarching corporation and in this case called the SX Corporation. So that all would have worked out fine if um, they had maybe Mr. Sinister as the trivia suggested or maybe some other characters or people show up to um, show up and um, try to break them out or use their or kind of have more or maybe even show the characters um, access the data files so have one of those other two characters like the flame guy or the cannonball guy actually I'm still not sure what the last guy's powers were but um, have one of them stumble upon the email system that the nurse the doctor lady was using to um, find all these emails and information as far as what Essex Corporation is up to so that's the reason that becomes a further reason for them to escape aside from just um torturing the girl the new girl um against her will so from there um the only thing that i could kind of um and i guess that's really about all there is for the film so overall if i was to give the grade of the film a grade i'd probably give it a grade of about maybe 50 or 60 percent um, it was okay. There was a lot of there was a start to a lot of good stuff in the film, but it did. Like I said, there's no payoff. It didn't really go anywhere. The characters escaped. There was um, the idea that um, it was that Professor X potentially knows about them, but didn't show up. Um, seems like it could have been a better payoff to have him show up, um, and especially since it takes place during the time of. Um, Apocalypse, it would have been nice to have more of that tie-in to make the film relevant or at least um, have maybe not necessarily anything from the actual film of X-Men Apocalypse or maybe show like um, Fallout or footage from um, the film from Apocalypse and then show the like maybe like an explosive blast like from a distance of when that villain guy showed up and then these um, characters were created and that's why the hospital exists and show a little bit more backstory and exposition to make the film at least seem like it has a point even if Professor X and Storm don't show up or even if it's just Professor X at least have some actual tie-in to how these characters were created and um, then have their have the scene where they tell their backstory of well, the first time they notice their powers so that at least it makes sense and you know as some sort of relevance and relationship to what's going on and if you look at the so if you look at the, um, the Rotten Tomato score for the film it has a critic score of 35% and an audience score of 56% so generally not very well received um, it's like I said it's okay it, uh, it's an okay of, the, of a film um, it wasn't necessarily a bad film and the final sequence the fight sequence with the bear and the lesson learned was okay and it made sense and it was interesting enough to show their growth of the characters over the course of the film and it made sense but like i said it doesn't have any tie into anything else so an extra five to fifteen minutes of exposition at the beginning of the film and throughout the film as far as relating the characters to the sx corporation and to uh, mutants and Professor X and um, Magneto and all of them would have made it that much better. And when you see the final shot of the uh, film with the um, school destroyed and the um, shot of the opening gates was seems like it was supposed to be a Easter egg or visual cue that this is related to um, Professor X's mansion. Uh, for the school for the um, gifted and, and I forget the full name of the school but it felt very much like Professor X's school so in general it, like I said it could have been done better a lot of good elements wasn't totally bad but because of all the production issues and delays and all of that kind of like with Solo um, the Star Wars story it would have it could have been a lot better and um a little bit more time and maybe increasing the budget or even not to say that this is something like Disney's fault but if Disney had come in and said hey as part of this deal we're gonna give you an extra budget of 80 million dollars so let's get let's uh, smooth it out you know 
with sandpaper, smooth out all the rough edges, add a couple of scenes, make it seem worthwhile. It, granted, it's not going to fix everything, but at least it makes it worthwhile and not as bad of a film. Especially with the de delays with COVID, that could have been a good reason to... With the delay in release, they could have added a few shots after the fact to make that um, make the film worth it and then release it. So to say, hey, we've added some stuff to make the film good this is why you like it or whatever marketing to add a positive spin on it and make it worth the while so like i said over overall not a bad film but not a great film so for me giving it a grade of about 50 to 60 percent is there it's if they end up making an x-men cinematic universe or tying it in somehow to um, the rest of the MCU, um, as far as maybe what's going to happen in Phase 4 or 5 to introduce the X-Men and Mutants back into the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. We'll see if this film um, um, is somehow brought back in or if they, tie, if they expand on what happens in this film to um, maybe make a, like a Marvel version of Teen Titans or something like that where this group of characters becomes the new team or the marvel version of the teen titans that might make it worth it so that at least the film has a reason to be watched so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback um, maybe something i missed or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphones neil doll reviews for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all that good stuff and of course by supporting the show on patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 you get an ad free version of the episodes as well as um, bonus content and early access to upcoming content so if you are a patron you already know what the next uh, video game gameplay is going to be um, along with an upcoming um, review for on the blog so uh, for things like that be sure to support the show on patreon again patreon.com slash patel n01 but thanks for tuning into this particular episode 